How are you? Perfect? Yay! Uh, we have amazing sessions uh, ahead of us. Um, I want to call the next speaker to the stage. Doron Benary is going to give a talk. Uh, Director, Trust Your Labs, IBM Security. Do you know about IBM? It's a company dealing with computers. Doron, are you here? Yes, the stage is absolutely yours. Yes. Hi. Good luck, my friend. Okay, so I saw by raise of hands that approximately half of you came from uh, overseas. Hopefully you had some time to spend in uh, Tel Aviv Beach. Um, and I'm wondering if you ever thought what's under the surface, maybe fish, maybe rocks, maybe something more interesting is going on and you don't know about that. Um, and similarly, uh, we all log into many systems all the time, and sometimes you need to ask yourself what's going on under the surface. And if you think about under the surface, uh, well, maybe something interesting is going on uh, over there as well. So um, my name is Doron. I'm managing the Trustier Lab for IBM Security here in uh, Tel Aviv. And I'm going to talk about identity and specifically about using fraud fighting techniques as part of identity and access management programs. Um, so this is something I grabbed off Google, just kind of looking around at various infographics. This shows five years from 05 to 09, and uh, it's talking about data breaches and amounts of data that is leaked out, and the size of the bubble indicates the number of records that kind of went out, okay? Uh, by the way, credits below for all these uh, slides that I grabbed off Google. Um, this is the last five years, so this is 2017 to 2021 using the same scale, no Photoshops, etc. So you can see the number of bubbles, you can see the size of the bubble, it's a different story. We all understand what it means, right? Uh, doing some more Googling around and looking at reasons for that. Again, this is not scientific, just kind of infographic stuff. If you look at the left-hand side, uh, you see the key reasons for breaches and you see this big purple piece that is stolen credentials, right? Um, looking at something a bit more structured, a bit more uh, organized. So yes, I work for IBM. We have a yearly survey that uh, we do, which is called the Cost of Data Breach Report. Um, it's a very structured uh, piece of information, unlike just you know something off Google. Hundreds of organizations being surveyed in uh, many, many countries, different verticals, and so on and so on. So this is well-organized data, free, by the way. And um, here, too, you can see that the problem is getting bigger. So the upper picture is uh, talking about the days, the number of days it takes to uh, identify and contain a data breach, and you'll be amazed to see hundreds of days. Um, this, these are the real numbers. And the lower piece is showing you the average total cost of the data breach, again, keeps on rising for the past five years. So um, you look at that and you say, what are the key reasons? And part of the survey indicates that 20% of uh, the problem comes from identity breaches. And then you think, well, 20%, is this a lot? I don't know, maybe something else is 80%. So you look at the key reasons, and guess what? 20% is the biggest number followed by, you know, phishing, cloud misconfiguration, vulnerabilities, and so on and so forth. So what have we said so far? That in both in, you know, consumer markets and enterprise markets, um, things are getting worse over the past five years, and identity is being a leading factor any way you look at that, right? So um, talking about identity, this is the traditional approach. I think somebody mentioned it earlier today, put firewalls and gates and all kinds of stuff and look at good guys and bad guys and try to understand who's getting in, uh, in all kinds of methods, right? So put a password in, make a six-letter password, make a seven-letter password, make a password that is really, really long, make, put a dollar sign, put exclamination mark, put, you know, whatever. Um, we've all seen these and we know these do not always work. They can be bought online and could be breached. They could be recorded. Um, the industry moved to some other interesting stuff like really, really, really tough questions. Uh, what's your name and your quest and what's your favorite color? Uh, super hard questions. The problem with these, you can probably get the answer in Facebook or some other places. So 
you know, it's a problem as well. And not only we're now facing the identity at the gate issue, we also have another problem to look at. Is this even a real person or is this a bot? Is this a machine? Um, and, you know, we come over this with, you know, CAPTCHA, pictures, identify the crosswalks and all of that kind of stuff. So, um, something happened over the past few years. We've all seen that and uh, systems get, are getting more and more secure using not only password, something you know, but also something you have, like your phone. So, authenticators of all kinds of, um, you know, all kinds of methods of authentication where they actually verify you have your phone with you, uh, which is actually a great improvement. Um, and, uh, you know, you look at that and say, well, great, <laughs> maybe the problem is solved, okay? So the problem is not solved because of a few reasons. First of all, MFA can be hacked, okay? Uh, MFA can be hacked, and when you think about that, the first thing that comes to mind is social engineering. Somebody's going to call you and in some sophisticated, sneaky way, make you confess and tell your uh, secret number or something like that. But this is not a very scalable um, uh, operation and the bad guys are looking for something that actually scales up and there are many other methods where MFA can be broken and it looks like you know some bizarre science fiction stuff sim swaps and device spoofy, spoofing and hijacking a session and malware and all kinds of stuff like that but we you know we interest you we see these every day and this is what we help our customers fight so I'm going to zoom in on malware for a second the lower left uh, what you see here is a recording of the bad guy's command and control, okay? And what you can see is somebody, the bad guy, essentially scheduling a task to run a screen locker on a victim's device. Now, the device is a phone that was already contaminated with malware somehow, so the job is being scheduled and the job is being executed and the victim phone is what you see on the right hand side is basically putting on some system update in progress where the victim cannot get out of this uh, situation. What's really happening behind the scenes is that the victim is receiving an MFA code. The MFA code is being stolen by the bad guys into that command and control center you see in the background and the SMS message is being deleted. Uh, the only way out of this screen is restart the phone, you restart the phone, you forgot all about your request to MFA, the bad guys have the login, the password, the MFA, they have it all, uh, money could be gone, right? So this is real, this is happening and we see these all the time. And another thing about MFA and the problem not being solved with MFA, um, it impacts usability. Now, let's talk a little bit about that one. Um, that's again something I grabbed off credits to the famous Dilbert, uh, and you see the IT guy wishing that to complete the login process, you need to stare directly at the sun. So this is a very typical, let's protect everything. Um, and there, there's a good reason for that. Usability means money uh, in many sectors. So uh, card status, shopping carts, right? Card status after forget or reset password, 20% lost. Transaction loss due to uh, authentication failure, almost 50% lost. So usability is a big deal, right? And what's happening in many of these organizations that struggle with that is some sort of, uh, you know, Solomon judgment or whatever you call that, where you need to cut babies in two and make really tough decisions. Uh, the typical interaction is the CISO would go, I need more security, give me some more of that. The line of business will say, I must have great usability, I don't want these shopping carts abandoned. The IT guys basically say, just tell me what to do. And somebody at the top is kind of saying, you know, now what? And if you think this is kind of imaginary story, it's not really happening and so on, uh, I'm showing you a real example uh, of one of our customers whose name shall not be disclosed, who was working for many months over there, I don't know, seven or eight months, on a huge project. And the goal for this huge project, reducing MFA rates, okay? So they put an internal KPI for having MFA rates no more then 2.5%, okay? And it took them months and months to get there, optimizing their system, of course, reducing MFA without compromising security. So this is a very tough, um, tough uh, balance act to run, okay? Um, so maybe the problem is machine learning. That's the new, you know, we talked about passwords and personal questions uh, and MFA, so how about machine learning, right? 
Um, so, big promise over there. Uh, that's a um, um, teaser, I guess, for a conversation that is going to take, late, take place later on today in this forum for uh, AI insecurity. This is something we've been working on, looking at mouse clicks, up, down, right mouse, left mouse, scroll, wheel. So we know how to look at these signals and break some sort of code around that and be able to detect fraudulent sessions and real identity sessions just by the clicks. And you can see the graphs. If this is of interest to you, follow-up session later on today by one of our uh, uh, steering engineers. Um, and I'm gonna show you another interesting thing. Uh, mouse movement and how they look when uh, rat is installed. Rat is not a big mammal. It's uh, remote access tools. So a lot of fraud and identity is being stolen by a remote access tool being put on your machine and, and uh, the victim is basically tempted to move the mouse and take actions where really the bad guy is controlling the screen. So what you see uh, in this uh, uh, video, it's actually two videos. The upper part, the lower part is a different video. And this is a recording uh, of mouse movements. Uh, the upper one is a human, is a real person. The lower one is, is essentially a bot using a uh, rat, right? So there are indeed ways using machine learning and smart algorithms to distinguish a person from a bot, rat with no rat, and so forth. So, you know, is this the solution? Let's just, you know, we use machine learning and uh, magic happens and that's it. Uh, the problem is that from afar, it looks really simple. You collect a lot of data, you put it into AI, you get the answer, yes, no. In reality, a lot of problems in collecting the data, missing data, huge operational load in working on that, and a lot of maybes, that's one problem, and explainability is the other problem. You get results and you need, because of regulation and because of ethics and many other good reasons, you need to be able to explain the, re the result, and you cannot because it's some secret thing. So what is the identity silver bullet? Uh, our conclusion and the way we work, there is no silver bullet. We are basically collecting a lot of data, collecting a lot of data, and we're putting it into good use using five key components. The first is a rule engine. The second is uh, AI and machine learning that is being used by the rule engine. Global collaboration, collecting a lot of data for, from consortium of customers. A lot of research and a lot of experts, real humans that uh, uh, work on that. Now, you combine that with the approach called zero trust, which assumes, as explained here before, assumes the bad guys are already inside, which means you need to verify the identity not only at the gate, but all the time, inside. And what it means from technology perspective, it means that um, essentially you check, you do everything I talked about, not only upon login, but you do it upon step one and step two and step three, all the way to the end, and this allows you to assess the risk of the identity throughout an interaction and not only at the gate. Um, so key takeaway points, my timer is red, so I'm, somebody's gonna shoot me quickly. Uh, so the key takeaway points, one is identity is a leading factor in security breaches, uh, and it's also a cornerstone of zero trust architecture. Uh, consumer I am, and Workforce RM are informing and enriching each other. IAM is identity and access management. Um, fraud fighting techniques that came from the fraud area um, are kind of already making their way into identity and, and access. Uh, we have enterprises that can uh, secure their customers and employees using the same uh, methods already today. And by the way, IBM, an organization of uh, around 280,000 employees is using this technology, kind of eat your own uh, dog food, champagne, whatever, uh, to secure ourselves. And the last one is that there is no silver bullet. So hopefully next time you get challenged with an MFA, you get a little bit more appreciation of what's going on under the surface, uh, beyond fish and rocks, there may be some interesting battle going on. Um, and with that, thank you.